Polio is making a comeback in New York and other places. But what kind of polio strain are we dealing with today? How did it make it to the U.S.? And how can we keep it from spreading? Continued progress in the battle against polio is signaled with the start of large-scale tests of a new vaccine. Polio was a major issue in the 1940s and 50s. Around that time, some people didn't go outside for fear of catching it. And if you did catch it, you could end up in one of these. But since 1979, it hasn't really been a problem here, until recently. It has to do with what's in these droppers, which contain the oral polio vaccine. You see, there are two different kinds of polio vaccines, injected and oral. The oral hasn't been used in the U.S. since 2000. Both are very effective, but the oral vaccine is more affordable and easier to administer. And for those reasons, it's more commonly used in the developing world. But one of the risks with it is it contains a weakened virus that can mutate and regain the ability to infect unvaccinated people. That's what's happening with a strain that's spreading in New York, called VDPV2, vaccine-derived poliovirus 2. This summer, health officials identified one symptomatic patient, an unvaccinated person from Rockland County in New York. Now, you might be thinking, isn't the U.S. pretty good at vaccinating people against polio? And if the oral vaccine isn't being used in the U.S., how did the mutant virus end up here? 93% of babies in the U.S. born between 2017 and 2018 were vaccinated against polio. That's a pretty solid vaccination rate. But zoom into areas in New York where polio has shown up in wastewater samples and you get a very different picture. In Rockland County and um, Orange County, it's around 60%. So a lot of these places where we're seeing polio appear also have lower than average vaccination rates. VDPV2 was also popped up in the last year in countries like Yemen, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Nigeria. These countries all have one thing in common with the affected areas of New York State, low vaccination rates. It's not a perfect overlap, but look at this map. The places with low vaccination rates are where cases of paralytic polio have also been reported. One of the most worrisome effects of the disease is paralysis. It can also cause breathing problems and in the worst cases, death. We know the person who was infected with polio virus in Rockland County, New York, caught it in the US, but we still don't know where the virus came from originally. Health officials in the US say there could be hundreds of silent cases lurking in the background. About 70% of cases are asymptomatic. So that's just like a crazy high number. That's worrisome because people who are asymptomatic can still spread the virus, and it also makes the disease really hard to track. In fact, based on how many mutations were found in the polio patient sample, scientists estimated that this strain of BDPV2 had been circulating globally for up to a year. It was also genetically related to strains found in the UK and Israel. There isn't a cure for polio, but three doses of the polio shot we use in the U.S. are roughly 99% effective at preventing paralysis. Most often, unvaccinated people get polio when they touch their mouth after coming in contact with often invisible particles of an infected person's poop, someone who hasn't washed their hands after going to the bathroom, or someone sneezing or coughing. That's why the disease mostly affects kids and why hygiene is so important. And if you're at all unsure of whether you're vaccinated, Talk to your doctor.